Rory Coy, last two sip boy, won the big one. And tonight's so, out, we are gonna go with Rory Coyle defending his defiant World Heavyweight Championship against Justin Sizer. Here is your winner, as a result of a submission, Laura Di Matteo! You go out there tonight, kick John Badbone's fingers ass, and lights out, you get game rookie. Rolling through, now what's this? Start, starting with the submission, it brings us to Republican remorse. Republican remorse by David Starr. Clear is, oh, he's tapping, clear, tap. Starr wins it with the Republican remorse. As Gabriel Kidd's here, here comes the young bull. Two on one, two on one against a man in David Starr who is already not 100%. There you're going to be 0% after this, after this. That's Joe Hendry's music, here comes Hendry. Joe Hendry, of course, with unfinished business against Kidd as well. Time limit draw between Hendry and Kidd. And Magnificent Seven, and now Hendry fighting each other to get to Gabriel Kidd. Wow. Oh. Two big personalities. You talk about oh, riding. It's business. Last week, making all sorts of headlines. He's going to be fired up tonight, Bradshaw. As well as that, we have a tag team championship match. That match is going to happen right now. White Wolves. Join us all the way from Madrid for a second fight of the cherry here in Defiant Wrestling. It's a great shout, I think, by General Amin to grant them a tag team title match. They had a non-title match a few weeks ago, if you remember, against the then champions, Aussie Open. They lost the match, but under highly controversial circumstances. Carlos Romo and A Kid, they feel like they have everything to prove. Not to themselves, but to Defiant Wrestling after what happened last time. But they've been going up against the new they're Defiant points. Wrestling Tag Champ. This is the team of Ashley Dawn, Kelly Six, your reigning and defending Defiant Wrestling Tag Team Champions, the South Coast Connections! Ashley Dawn and Kelly Six, the South Coast Connection Tag Team Champions here. They were the ones who beat Aussie Open, ending that 300 plus day reign for Mark Davis and Kyle Fletcher. But SEC, for all their bravado on the surface, they will have watched just how well Team White Wolf did 
against Aussie Open those few weeks ago. And if I was Kelly Six and Ashley Dunn, I would be very worried for the future of my tag team title reign. How about this? If SCC, Kelly Six and Ashley Dunn are victorious here tonight against Team White Wolf, here's a proposition for you because it worked out so well the last time and you loved it, Bradshaw. You loved every second. I think we should get SCC on the Reloaded podcast. What are you saying to it? I've already been on it. Yeah, well, it worked so well. That's my point. Very recently. And there's so much more to talk about. I mean, this, this title reign is epic. It's everything you want from tag team champions. Team White Wolf win. We'll have them on. No doubt whatsoever. In any case, let us know who you think is going to walk out of here tonight on Loaded as the tag team champions and also who is going to end up facing Pack at Lights Out. Will it be Robbie X, El Fantasmo, Chris Brooks or Mark Haskins? Join the conversation on both of those subjects on social media using the hashtag WeAreDefiant. Every single one of those possibilities, those matches, they would make your mouth water. And speaking of, that's what we have, the Defiant Tag Titles on the line to kick off Loaded. The A-Kid trying to apply the submission early on here against Kelly Six with an armbar now. Six trying to sweep his legs around and maybe force the break. A-Kid is relentless in trying for various different body parts. The ankle being the most recent. Kelly Six escaping in the end. A-Kid with a little smile on his face as Apparently, Six a little bit flustered. Well, thank God for, for Kelly Six's foot there. It, it hugged that rope and it stopped him, one half of the tag champs, from coming down hard on his head. Yes, thank God. And I know, I sense sarcasm in your voice and I don't know if I like it. More A could get in the better of this early exchange against Kelly Six. We saw, of course, Six and Dunn have their first title defense two weeks ago here on Loaded against the dynamic duo and what a defense it was what what incredibly valiant victory an incredibly tainted victory against the dynamic duo and what do you mean how's it tainted they won the match brad you know exactly how you were there watching it as everyone else was the history books say that the scc picked up one for the win column that's all that matters side headlock from a kid as a blind tag from carlos romo i don't think ashley done has seen it sees him now as Romo takes him into the rope, trying to roll him back to the pin attempt. Dunn held onto the ropes. Romo goes underneath. Yeah. Romo with the high leg. Lariat takes down Dunn. Yeah. Romo goes for the cover. Two count and Kelly Six looks a little worried. He was starting to get into the ring to help his partner out. Dunn in the end didn't need him, but only kicked out with a half second to go. Yeah. Come on, referee. This is a handicap match. Get one of those men out the ring. So now you're a stickler for the rules. Two count by A-Kid. A-Kid, as he did against... As he did against uh, Kelly Six, is having the better of this exchange against Ashley Dunn as well. Oh! oh Team White Wolf. They're going to have some frustrations. We mentioned earlier on what happened in their first appearance against Aussie Open. Good lightning strike twice. Six is in front of going through for the pin. Ashley Dunn is still legal. Takes Romo off the apron. There's the cover. Six thinks it's over. He is wrong. And I thought that was going to be more disappointment for White Wolf. And this is how well oiled a machine Dunn and Six are, Dave Bradshaw. This is partly why you, you don't like them, because you're jealous of their, their, their teamwork. There is one thing I am not of SCC. It is jealous, I promise you. There's a cover by Six and a kick out. And in White Wolf. Should be jealous. They're packing some serious gold in the form of those tag team titles. Yeah, for now. Nuranagi slam from Ashley Dunn. Running shooting star, standing moonsault. Can't deny the acrobatic ability of the tag team champions as Dunn gets a two count. Now you're coming around. Now you're seeing what I've been saying all along. Dunn and Six are way, way more than just Will Ospreay's yeah. boys, as you once said. One compliment does not equal an endorsement. Well, here's your challenge for next week or the week after that. Find another compliment that you can give the SCC. Come on, there's loads of them you could give. They're handsome. They're fast. They're naturally talented. They have great hair. They're cheeks. That's not a compliment. 
No, see, I'm not very good at this game. He's tagged by six. As Akid is isolated in the champion's corner. And he's looking over at Carlos Romo. His six as he tries to pick up Akid. Kid is throwing some fire here, fighting back. Six and still on one foot. Oh, Nintaguri from Akid. And Don recognizes the urgency of the situation. Yeah, no tag, by the way. The drop kick on Dunn. And now Akid possibly with a chance to do what is the legal thing in a tag team match and make the tag. Oh, come on. The SEC are the new breed of tag teams here in pro wrestling. They can do it over the hell they please. No, they can't. And that is the problem. Carlos Romo, though, unloading on both of the tag team champions. We have Australian tag team champions here in Defiant, but we have Spanish ones next. International flavor here in Defiant. Right to the double clothesline attempt by SCC. Tilton well by Romo sends Dunn in the sick to DDT from six on his own partner. Courtesy of Carlos Romo. Romo impressing here. Romo might win this one two on one. Wouldn't that be a turn up for the books? It can happen, surely. And Romo and A-Kid still feeling aggrieved by that controversial refereeing decision which cost them a match against Aussie Open a few weeks ago. Roma pushes six away and the running knee. Turns six inside out. Will it be the end of the tag team title reign of SCC? No. You can sense the frustration building for Team White Wolf. This, this could make all that frustration wash away if they become the new champs. Once more though, the tag team synergy of Team White Wolf impressive. Long blow up into a German super right on the back of his head. Goes oh. 26. Stereo kicks from Team White Wolf. The cover to win the tag titles, no. Kelly Six somehow found a way to power that shoulder off the canvas and prolong SCC's tag team championship reign. Thank God for that. I think I speak for both of us there. I think you are wrong. Here comes Ashley Dunn. Tag from Six and Six goes for the kick. Gets him on the second time of asking. Dunn follows up with an insecurity of his own. Excellent teamwork. And now he's a long blower across the ropes. We've seen this before from SCC. The moonsault right onto the shoulders and upper back of Akid. The cover from Ashley Dunn. And the kick out from Akid just about keeps the challenges in the match. But that looked like it was a very, very dangerous moment for the young men from Spain. Ashley Dunn pounding the, the Martin frustration. SCC's time to be frustrated. Oh. Super kick from main frustration, they may be knocked out. Hey kid, and another been so gurry, they've been using that a lot here. And SCC, my god, look at that strike from Romo. Pace quickening here. Champions and challengers both giving of their best here. And then Seesaw, tag team match, there's the Spanish fly and the moonsault from Romo. Aiken is legal. Aiken, the cover to win the tag oh. titles. And Kelly Six by the of his teeth, the tips of his fingers makes the save. And that's why Ashley Dunn and Kelly Six are tag team partners. They're always there for each other, no matter what. Six will send Romo to the outside and now you've got to think they're going to try for the double team SCC as they are so want to do at any opportunity. Aikid finds himself one on one essentially in there against Six. Dunn has rolled to the outside. Like he gets caught at the end of that flurry of offense. Oh. Knee right into the temple. Over into Guri from six. Six is going to get a kid up for that finishing move they've used with great effect, SCC. Precariously placed. A kid. A swing and kick right into the face of Kelly Six. Wow. Takes out Dunn as well. Here comes Robo. Overhead neck breaker from the top. Will we see a championship change? Ashley Dunn, nowhere to be. Oh, Dunn's just come and got the a tag title belt from here, from in front of us, and now he sweeps the leg of Akin. Oh, whoa, whoa! Did you see that? Did you see that? I think you caught him on the upper thigh, the hamstring maybe. Fine, oh, there's the tag title shot, the shot with the belt. Romo, what a forearm from Ashley Dunn. Romo suffered a low blow. Akin has been hit with that championship belt. Here comes that lethal finishing move from SCC. Fair and square. There we go. There.
Square. Here are your winners, and still Defiant Wrestling Tag Team Champions, Dawning Six, the South Coast Connection! Another day, another cheat shot, another shortcut for SCC, who are still the Tag Team Champions. Oh, and you love every single bit of saying that, don't you, Dave Bradshaw? I love nothing about this situation. You absolutely adore it. Look at them. Ashley Dunn, Kelly Six, as they rightfully should be, yes, raise their hands high in the air so the entire world can see it. The South Coast Connection are your Defiant Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Why? 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 Here's why. Now the proper... The prestigious one has got a very simple request. Gabriel Kidd. The prestigious one versus Gabe. Because we need to find out who the better wrestler is. The fans want to see it. We want it to happen. Now let's make the match. Should I agree? And I want right, to give excellent. it to you. I want to give it to you. But I've already promised Gabriel Kidd to David Starr. David Starr is going to take on Gabriel Kidd at Lights Out. He did me a favour, so dude, look, if it lights out, you can take out John Klinger, because believe you me, we've all got a John Klinger problem, I can then give you Gabriel Kidd later on. It's as simple Listen, as that. The prestigious one has got absolutely no issue facing anyone in professional wrestling, so no problem, I will face John Klinger at Thank lights you. out, but that does not take away what I need. And I need to face Gabriel Kidd. Now, here's a suggestion that you can do right here tonight. And that's take the prestigious one, Joe Hendry, teaming up with David Starr versus John Klinger and Gabriel Kidd. Dude, we can do that match at some Ex point in the future. But there's no room on the card for a lot. I do not ask for a lot. I've been here since day one. I know you have. last week, I had to watch the champion of our company walk out to that ring and say that he was going to take the title that we're all striving for and put it in the bin I where it belongs. And Joe Hendry, who wasn't even booked on that show, asked you for one thing and you can't do it. What I, is happening here? Dude, I can do it. I just can't do it tonight. I can't do it tonight. That's the problem. You the card is full. You know what I I want that. You think I enjoy seeing that kind of stuff? But we can do it next week. Joe, next week, you've got your tag match. We've all got a tag match player. Holla holla. All right. What are you doing? What are you Prestigious. doing? Prestigious. What, what was going on next week? Miller would not have done that. As the assistant, to the assistant, that's exactly what Miller would have done. You shouldn't have done it. You shouldn't have done it. Another big match signed for Lights Out. Joe Hendry is going to be the latest man to try and take care of the John Klinger problem. Ho ho ho! Rather him than me, I have to say. John Klinger, a rampaging beast. The following women's match is wrestling. set for one fall, and it has a 20 minute time limit. Coming to the ring at this time, from Washington, Gia Adams! We also know that next week here on Loaded, it will be Klinger and Gabriel Kidd against Joe Hendry and David Starr. There's a unique tandem, but right now Gia Adams in the ring, and she is gonna face a young woman who has been increasingly vocal about her opposition to the women's champion. That champion is Kanji, this woman is Lizzie Styles. Hills from Liverpool, the one woman army, Lizzie Styles. Lizzie Styles believes that she is the rightful women's champion, but one person who disagrees with that is the newcomer who is undefeated here in Defiance, Laura DiMatteo. I'm here in Defiance to challenge for the women's title. And so far I'm undefeated. Three matches, three wins, baby. I told you, didn't I? And Lizzie Styles, I heard what you said about me. And hey, if you got a problem, we can tell it in the ring next week. Interesting stuff from Laura DiMatteo, who is, as she rightly says, undefeated here in Define, and she is saying that if Styles has a problem with her, then maybe they can sort it out in the ring next week here on Loaded. But meanwhile, Lizzy Styles has a more immediate problem, and that is the challenge of Gia Adams. Well, we saw last week Laura Di Matteo defeating stunner, stunning Lana Austin, rather. Now she turns her attention to the one woman army, Lizzy Styles. But if Gia Adams has her way, there might be nothing left of Styles. 
powerful side slam from Adams. Styles, of course, has a couple of non-title victories over Kanji, the women's champion. And that is why Styles seems to believe that she is the rightful champion here. Certainly isn't too impressed by this newcomer, Laura Di Matteo. Styles isn't impressed by anyone. She thinks it's only a matter of time before that defiant women's title is around her waist. It's a one count there. It might have only been a matter of seconds before this one was over, but Adams hangs in there. It's not easy to make an impact here in Defiant, especially in a division as competitive and packed as the Defiant women's division is. There's so many moving parts. Everyone, everyone is vying for that championship. It's such a competitive division. Every championship race right now here in Defiant is so, so competitive. One of the most exciting rosters that I can remember. You know the only one who's not here? The champion. The champion. She's, if she's not posting on Twitter, Dave Bradshaw, she's, she's, she's posted missing. That's, that's Lizzie Styles' point. This injury, this apparent injury that Kanji had. Apparent injury. Well, do you know for certain that it was an injury? Oh, come on. What kind of ridiculous conspiracy theory is that? Have you got any reason to think that Kanji would have such a lack of integrity that it would be a false injury? Well, we haven't heard a medical report from an actual doctor yet. All we have is Kanji's word to go on, and Lizzie Styles doesn't trust that. What's wrong with that? It's funny, when it's people you happen to have a lot of time for, you don't seem to look for a doctor's note, do you? Anyway, Styles with the cover on Adams, and that'll do it. Wow, very quick work by Lizzie Styles. Here is your winner! The One Woman Army, Lizzie Styles. Lizzie Styles making a statement at the expense of Gia Adams. Styles believes, as I said, that she should be the women's champion. But will Styles accept the challenge of Laura Di Matteo, this newcomer who is making waves here in Defiant? Can Styles put away this new threat? from the young Italian next week here on Loaded. Why? 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 What? what? No, why? Oh, yeah, he says why again. What? What? Why? Yeah. This guy's handwriting is bad, oh. you know. Hi guys. It's not bad. Oh. Hello. Thanks. Hi. Thanks. Thanks. Oh. Yeah, don't worry about it. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for coming here because I need to talk to you guys because I just want to applaud the amazing work that you guys have done with the anti-fun police. I mean, anyone who annoys those guys are friends with are friends of mine. So, really yeah, well done. What, fist pump? Fist pump? Is that okay. what we do? Is that what we do? Cool. I don't know. Fist pump? Okay, yeah, cool. Now, I want to talk to you because amazing tag team. However, not quite there when it comes to tag team title. You need to get a few more, oh. few more wins. You know, a few more wins? I get it. You understand, yeah, right? You been understand. Around. We haven't been around. You understand. But, but, you guys have done such an amazing job against the anti-fun police that I want to grant one of you the chance to fight No Fun Done for the No Fun title. Okay. 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 Right, so it's going to be a little bit of just tension. Just one of us. A little bit of tension. Right. One. I've got an idea. Okay. If, if if I fight for the no fun title, All right, okay. then later on tonight, okay. I'll... Yeah. You can have it, baby, you can have sweet, it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. He loves it when I do the dishes. I do. The dishes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the dishes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, um, two weeks time, Jack Sexsmith, you got it. Cool. Thanks for coming, guys. Cool. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Sweet. Thank you. Wow. I like those guys. I like it. Why? Yes. Here we go. It is time to find out who will face Pack at Lights Out. Brooks, we 
saw last week with a big chip on his shoulder for reasons that frankly are not apparent to me. He believes he has been overlooked here in Defiant for too long, but of course the evidence for that is very little because he's been given quite, given quite a big opportunity right now. Brooks better get his head in the game pronto because three other men are desperate, Dave Bradshaw, to get their hands on pack at lights out. Here comes one of them, a man who has history with Pac. Introducing the second competitor from Lincoln, England, made it tonight, 180 pounds, Robbie X. How good would it be? How good would it be for Robbie X to get a rematch against Pac? Because that match between Pac and Robbie a few weeks ago was absolutely remarkable, and I would love to see an encore. Remarkable is the word that don't forget. That was Robbie X, his debut here in Defiant Wrestling. What a way to take your bow in this company. Here comes a man who should take a bow nightly for what he does inside that ring. Very few men have made the kind of impact that El Fantasmo has made in their debut year here in Defiant, but El Fantasmo still obviously quite upset that he was unable to get the internet title out of the clutches of Martin Kirby at Magnificent Seven, but it's onwards and upwards, and El Fantasmo would love a chance to prove his worth once again against one of the most high-profile wrestlers in the world in Pac. No time to rest, no time to relax, but Sit and watch, ladies and gentlemen, this is just a glimpse into the athleticism of this man. I have said once, I'll say it again, he exists on an astral plane that us mere mortals could only dream of. Will that astral plane ride all the way to lights out where he goes one-on-one -on -one with Pac? Or will it be Chris Brooks, Robbie X, or uh, someone else? This man. Welcome back to Defiant for Mark Haskins. Vicky Haskins with him as well. The ever unpredictable Haskins. And this is going to be and any one of these four against Pack. Well, good luck to the referee before we even get this thing underway. You can already see this ref having a tough time keeping control. That's four big personalities, four dynamic performers, and four men who want to get their hands again on Pack. This is. I'm just gaming this out in my head, any of these for the potential matchups against Pat, all of them absolutely mouth-watering. Tantalizing. I would say I wouldn't like it to be Chris Brooks purely for the way he behaved last week. But other than that, any of the other three, you've got to think. Yeah, that you had absolutely. I mean, Brooks against Pack would be spectacular. I don't think we should be rewarding bad behaviour. You had quite a little chin wag with Chris Brooks last week on this very program. But here we go, ladies and gents. I wouldn't say it was a two-way conversation. But roll up by Brooks trying to finish early, and then Robbie X pin attempt the zone. The crucifix pin from El Fantasma. All four men trying to get this done in the opening seconds. One fall only here. What's Brooks doing? Chris Brooks rolling outside the ring. What is his problem? I do not understand why Chris Brooks has suddenly had this dramatic attitude change that we've seen in the past seven days. And Brooks almost walking head first into Vicky Haskins at ringside, who has a little equaliser along with her. You don't want to go into that situation, trust me. Well, Robbie X sends Fantasma into Haskins. Fantasma lands on the apron. 
X sends Fantasma ultimately to the outside, reverse of the Irish whip. Haskins in the corner. Haskins rolls through with the shoulder roll. X tries to catch him instead. Haskins grabbing that leg going for the half, grabbing back looking for an STF, and Robbie X gets to the bottom rope. Well, that's actually not a bad strategy, you know, because this match is moving so quickly that a submission might come faster than a pinfall. Haskins was looking maybe to lead to the outside. El Fantasmo changed those plans by getting back in the ring. Drop kick sends Haskins to the outside. Fantasma hasn't seen Robbie X. X is on the apron, slides underneath. No time to uh, admire your own handiwork here. Looks like El Fantasma was trying for Cartwheel to get out of that, couldn't get it. He took the brunt of that move from Robbie X, so he gets the boot up into the face of the man who face packed a few weeks ago. Hip toss from Robbie X, and jumping in the side of the head. And as you say, the action coming at the pace here. Robbie X trying to keep El Fantasmo inside the ring. He recognises that you have no time here. As soon as you eliminate one man, get him off you. Another one straight in there and there's evidence. Brooks has been vicious there, dragging Robbie X to the outside. I think X landed on the top of his head. Brooks is, oh God, Brooks spitting water, I guess that is, into Haskins and Haskins goes hard into that guardrail. And remember, this is just one fall, one submission, anything, and it's all over with. Brooks have been avoiding even taking part in the match until now. Stomping on the head, though. Goodness me, Brooks is a new level of viciousness here. Newfound aggression from Chris Brooks. Fantasma may have a cracked skull after that. Kick out. Keeps him in it, but Chris Brooks. As he said last week, believes he has been overlooked, he has been disrespected by Defiant Wrestling throughout his tenure here. He's looking to change his fortunes by getting that marquee match for Lights Out. Here comes Robbie X. There goes Robbie X. Chris Brooks just wants a one-on-one -on -one with El Fantasmo, it seems. Robbie X is going to be aching tomorrow. That's the second time he has landed hard on the outside of the ring. Brooks sends Fantasmo into the corner. Cat-like agility for the man from... British Columbia. Springboard cross body for by the Asai Moonsault. Brooks moves out of the way. And here comes Robbie X. Breathless action here on Loaded. Pack awaits the winner at lights out. And that is why this has been conducted in top gear from the very opening bell. Because all four of these men know what a big opportunity it would be to showcase their talents if they get the chance to be Pack's next opponent. Robbie, oh, double Pele kick, and that will send Fantasmo and Brooks to the outside. Oh, what a from Haskins. Haskins playing Matador there against Robbie X. Here comes Haskins, and Haskins saw that both his opponents were on the way out. The reflexes and responsiveness of Haskins are something else. Haskins is ripping this arena apart. Here comes El Fantasmo. Robbie X now looking to join the party. Robbie X on the top, there's a moonsault! Carnage at ringside in this four way. The decision has to happen inside the ring. All four men are currently outside it. Brooks back in, courtesy of Robbie X. Robbie with an opportunity here because the other two men involved in the match are on the outside. You need to know where all three of your opponents are. And Fatal four-way situation such as this. As Fantasmo now rejoins the action inside the ring, gets sent into the corner. Oh, excellent. Big kick. Fantasmo stumbling. He's been rocked by that kick to the side of the head. Yes! Oh, oh. the head. Belly to belly. Chris Brooks just in the wrong place at the wrong time. If you listen to Brooks, that is in the story of his defiant wrestling career. Now which way does this one turn? Mark Haskins back inside the ring. That element of unpredictability in a fatal four-way match is such an important part of the dynamic of any one of these. Any mistake by any of these four men could hand the match to one of their opponents. Oh. Haskins with that trademark aggression. Now Haskins looking to ascend to the top turnbuckle, it's Fantasmo! Clips Haskins around the top of the head. Fantasmo from out of absolutely nowhere. And now turns his attention to Robbie X. 
Fantasmo leaping up to the top and I've seen this from El Fantasmo before, kicks Haskins out of the way. Takes down both of his remaining opponents. El Fantasmo looking good, Dave. Yeah, exactly right. Looking great here. Kicks up to Haskins. Haskins gets out of harm's way. And instead it is El Fantasmo's face that is in harm's way. Eat this, says Haskins. Oh. Brooks now grabbing Haskins and he's doing good. Suplex, maybe. In fact, another team. Chris Brooks trying to show his worth. He's clearly a disgruntled employee, to put it mildly, here in Defiant right now. But Brooks oh my, sends oh. Robbie X into Fantasmo. Oh. Takes out both of them. Robbie may be out. Brooks looking to capitalize, but. That was genius from Chris Brooks. Used his own opponent's bodies against them. Double under with Brooks and instead Haskins gets in, breaks that up. Again, we are absolutely no closer to knowing who's going to win this. This is how much it means to step inside the ring with a man the caliber of Pac. And Tasman with those forearms. Now, the armbar, the armbar from Haskins. He's tapped out some of the best in the game with that. Robbie extending moves on Haskins moves out of the way and now Lambo on both of them oh my Chris Brooks coming back in too Brooks breaks it up knee to the jaw of Haskins Haskins with a bicycle kick to Brooks he's going to try and take Brooks out of this equation collide mid ring double super kicks from El Fantasma and Robbie X Robbie X oh. Boots going into the top of the head. And they're going for the exclamation. And instead, the octopus hold. Octopus hold from Chris Brooks. And look at this, a submission. The sharpshooter. The sharpshooter from Haskins. Stereo submissions, eye to eye, in the middle of the ring. And who's going to tap first? Haskins and Brooks trying to stop each other's submissions here. But they are being unsuccessful in the meantime. Don't forget El Fantasma or Robbie X could tap at any moment. Look at Haskins cinching back. Brooks is doing the same. What happens if both X and Fantasma tap out at the same time? Oh, oh my God. Oh God. Haskins with it. That's where he might be. Look at this from Haskins. Haskins exploding here on Chris Brooks. One way to break up a submission. Charges in with the elbow. Brooks, the tallest man in the match. At some distance, using that height to his advantage, or at least he was, till Haskins battled back. There's no one with the size of fight that Mark Haskins possesses, though. Haskins catches Brooks as he comes in. Fantasmo, though, catches Haskins. Fantasmo gets caught by Brooks. Here comes Haskins, though. Haskins rolling through. Got Brooks on his shoulders in the fireman's carry. Slams him down hard, the cover by Haskins, and a kick out by Brooks. Whoa! Running shooting star from Robbie X. Moves up from Phantom. This is wild. Bodies flying everywhere here on Woodies. Absolutely wild from all four of these guys. And these fans in Newcastle showing their appreciation for what Haskins, Brooks, X, and Phantasmo are doing to get that track at Pack. See how El Fantasmo sends Haskins to the outside. He can focus his attention on Brooks here. Looking for that spinning neck breaker we've seen before. There it is, nails all of it. Brooks out cold, middle of the ring. Fantasmo looking to take it here. Brooks denies him. Fantasmo has to act quickly. Fantasmo up on the top. El Fantasmo. What are you looking for? Maybe a sent on bomb there but instead Chris Brooks got out with Brooks oh Brooks is Brooks Brooks is left Chris Brooks is out of here upon what's that know, all about I don't know where Chris Brooks has gone but this match continues I guess it's technically a three way now He's temporarily oh my Robbie X catches Haskins X. That rolling Death Valley driver looking for the exclamation oh he's over caught the caught the armor Haskins. Haskins could make Robbie X tap at any second. X is going to have to tap. Fantasmo! A big body press. And now, 
Michael Fantasmo top of the moves on Robbie X. The cover by Fantasmo and that's done it. El Fantasmo will face Pat. Here is your winner of the special four way match to face Pat and lights out El Fantasmo. What a match. What a fatal four way. But at the end of it, El Fantasmo stands tall and he will face Pat at right out. Pat must be licking his chops. A fellow high flyer who takes to the skies like you and others. El Fantasmo gets his shot at Pat. Wow. El Fantasmo victorious here, celebrating with the crowd as he marches on to lights out. Well, John, I believe that's what we agreed, so I'll leave you to solve the problem. Solve the problem. Well, I'll tell you what, Lights Out on April 17th is really starting to shape up. We now know, of course, that El Fantasmo will face Pac. We've also got David Starr against Gabriel Kidd confirmed. Joe Hendry going to try and solve the John Klinger problem. Lights Out, as I say, looking like a hell of an evening. And next week here on Loaded, David Starr will team with the prestigious one, Joe Hendry, against Gabriel Kidd and John Klinger. It's all kicking off here. Not only that, but Lizzie Styles goes one on one with Laura Di Matteo. The winner, by the way, gets Kanji and a shot at that Defiant Women's Championship at Lights Out. Well, that's all coming up next week here on Loaded right now. Let's take it back to the ring. The Dragon, one of the new talents we've had here in Defiant this year, who is looking to make a mark, but oh my. Oh my indeed. That's all that needs to be said when this man is in the building. His opponent, Rob Lake Ule, waiting tonight, 250 pounds. He is the current Defiant Wrestling World Champion. As I understand it, Rory Coyle insisted on having a non-title exhibition match here. Apparently, you can't go too long without inflicting pain on someone, and that clearly is his plan here against Mickey the Dragon. No disrespect to the Dragon, but this seems like something of a mismatch. Well, Coyle has been making all sorts of threats and all sorts of promises about what he's going to be doing in the future here in Defiant Wrestling. He is our champion, Dave Bradshaw. And as the champion, he feels he gets the right to demand whatever he pleases. It's up to General Amin to do his bidding. Well, I'm sure General Amin doesn't see it that way, but we had a very interesting, I guess you'd call it an acceptance speech. It was like a bizarre version of an Oscars speech last week from Rory Coyle as he accepted what he thought were the accolades for his most recent movie where he apparently has taken out Rampage and Obviously that follows up his, as a sequel I guess you could call it, to where he eliminated Primate. It was terrifying. Much like everything Rory Coyle does is terrifying. Well, the question now is whether Justin Sizen will complete that slightly malevolent trilogy that lights out. It will be Justin Sizen who is next to challenge for the Defiant World title. Can the superhuman take out the horror icon? Horror icon, just those very words chill me to my very core. I, I still can't get over the fact that Rory Coyle, this 
Unpredictable, horrendous human being. A man who will do anything to inflict pain with a sick, twisted smile on his face. Rory Coyle is our champion, Bradshaw. Yeah, it is a new and strange world. A very threatening world that we're having to get used to here. Vicious full Nelson slam there from Coyle. The video nasty, the last true sick boy. Whatever you want to call this man, you can add another thing to that list, and that is champion. Mickey the Dragon has his arms all caught up here by Coyle. Coyle is poking into the eyes of the Dragon. He'll do whatever it takes. Nothing is off limits. Oh, hang on a second, look at this from Coyle. Coyle's got him up deep in the lake from Coyle. Mickey the Dragon completely out of it. Count for as long as you like, it's academic. Coyle picks up the win. Here is your winner. The Defiant Wrestling World Champion, the last true sick boy, Rory Coyle. Well, I have no idea what point Coyle thinks he's making by taking out someone like Mickey the Dragon, but I guess he's made that point. Rory Coyle uh, calling for his prize, the Defiant Heavyweight Championship, the very prize he took from Rampage after almost a year as champ for the Alpha Male. And now the video nasty, just staring a hole through Mickey the Dragon. Oh, it's just, Coyle's not done. Coyle is assaulting Mickey the Dragon with a championship belt. Rory Coyle does whatever he wants, whenever he wants to do it. This is my point, Dave Bradshaw. Not General Amin, not anyone can control that sickle. He's got that bag of tricks, that prosthetic arm. We've seen him use that before. You have to worry for Mickey the Dragon at this point. He's ripe for the pickings. Coyle, again, continuing this post-match assault on Mickey the Dragon. That referee is powerless to do anything about it. If he so much as looks at Coyle the wrong way, he'll get a kicking as well. If Mickey's got any sense, he will try and get out. What is that? Is that... Oh, I thought got my a, eyes were deceiving me. A lighter. Coyle has a lighter. Oh my God, oh my God! What was that? That a, a, a flame thrown into the into the face. Did I see that right? Mickey the Dragon won't be seeing anything for a while, if ever. Here come some other referees. This is out of control. What Coyle is Coyle's assaulting the referees. That's three referees he's taken down. Mickey the Dragon has had some kind of fireball explode in his face, courtesy of our defiant world champion. And you can see Mickey the Dragon writhing in agony. What? He's got those jump oh, what's leads. next? I've seen him use these before as well, the jump leads. Coyle uses all of these things as... To... Mickey the Dragon is holding his face. I don't know what damage has possibly been done from that fireball, but this is... He's, he's tying him up. He's tying him up with the jump leads. Almost hog-tying the man. Now what? Oh, oh. wait, hang on now. Well, hang on oh, now. You, you don't think, honestly. Like, let's be serious here. You do not believe... That's petrol. That's petrol! Oh, whoa, come on. whoa, 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 hey Rory, Rory, this is going way too far, I mean this is not how a champion behaves, this is not how the face of defiant wrestling behaves, what are you trying to achieve here Rory, what are you trying to do, you've already beaten the man, you've already beaten him, there's nothing more to do, what are you trying, huh, wait there guys, wait there, Look, I just, if you need anything, Rory, if you want anything, have a talk with me and we can talk, we can talk about it, we can... I don't need anything from you, Prince of me. But I want something from me. I don't want you to wear this next week. Nah, because next week I'm loaded. I'm going to give you something you've never seen before. I want you to take this. I want you to wear, dress up real nice. Join me in this ring, because we're going to host a big old celebration. A big old thank you, a big old goodbye to Rampage. That's right, dress it up, wear it real nice. Be like you're part of the big boys show. Because next week, we're going to hold a celebration to the memory of the wrestler. Because he's gone, 
the memory of the guy that held that belt for longer than anybody else before I beat him and I sent him packing like every single other champion this place has ever had. Next week, live and loaded, Rory Coyd presents a celebration of the career of Rob Page Bryant. Yes, lost his mind. Rory Coyle, I don't know if that's intended as some kind of sick memorial. Rampage has apparently done here in Defiant after Rory Coyle beat him for the, for the world title. But Rory Coyle promising a celebration of Rampage next week here on Loaded. Well, thank goodness more damage wasn't done here. Coyle walks out promising that big, big funeral, I guess you'd call it, for Rampage next week.